Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram. Instagram.com slash greatdetectives. Our listener support slash appreciation campaign begins. As always, you can support the show on a one-time basis, support.greatdetectives.net, using the Zelle app to box13 at greatdetectives.net, or by mail to Adam Graham, P.O. Box 15913, that's P.O. Box 15913, Boise, Idaho, 83715. But our focus over the next few weeks will be on our Patreon campaign. You can become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month at patreon.greatdetectives.net. We also are introducing a new survey to help with our quality of advertising, and we'll talk a bit more about it after the podcast. Uh, You can go to that at adsurvey.greatdetectives.net, and we'll be focusing on that as well in the next couple of weeks. Now let's get into this week's episode of The Falcon. The original air date, October the 15th, 1950, and the title is The Case of the Careless Client. The Kraft Foods Company brings you The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Irene. No, I can't see you tonight. I'm all hung up. <laughs> Some girl likes my looks. Well, Angel, she must think I'm pretty as a picture, because she's certainly out to frame me. <laughs> This is Ed Hurley, friends, inviting you on behalf of the Kraft Foods Company to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Careless Client. Before the Falcon solves tonight's case, let's listen to this. Miracle Whip! Has a flavor so pleasing. Miracle Whip! Tastes so lively, so teasing. Miracle Whip! Only one of its kind. Miracle Whip! Best salad dressing you'll find. Miracle Whip tastes really good. Not too sharp, not too mild, but just exactly right. And Miracle Whip tastes different, too. Different from any other salad dressing. Try it yourself. See why it's America's favorite salad dressing. The one and only Miracle Whip. And now, the case of the careless client. It's early afternoon in New York, and a short, dumpy little man with lacquered hair walks down the second floor corridor of the Gordon Building until he comes to a door marked Daniel Russell, Private Investigations. Obviously, our unknown friend has been here before. For without any hesitation, he eases himself into Mr. Russell's office. And ease is the proper word. For Mr. Russell, with his back to the door and his ear glued tightly to the phone, doesn't even hear him. Now, look, Harris, you got to give me a break. You know I'm good for the money. Sorry, Russell, it's no dice. That's the gratitude I get, and after all the dough I've lost to you. All I ask is that you let me go in the cuff for another 20. I got a sure thing going on the 5th at Detroit. Now, where have I heard that before? Listen, Danny, why don't you do both of us a favor and stay away from the horses? Okay, Harris. You don't want to take my bets, I'll find a bookie who will. Yeah, name one. <clears throat> oh, uh... I beg your pardon. Uh, Harris, a client just walked in. I'll have to call you back later. 
I'm sorry you ain't the rough, Mr. Russell. There's nothing important, Mr. Giuliano. Just one of my men checking in. Mm, I see. Sit down, won't you? Uh, you have something for me? Yes, indeed. I located your boy. Larry Stratton? Yep. Stratton's in New York, all right. Got here last week from Washington. First thing he did was to get himself a room under the name of Leonard Simons. Funny how they always keep the same initials. And where does my friend Mr. Stratton live? 1423 Carroll Place. A small rooming house. I uh, pumped the superintendent, but he couldn't tell me much. And incidentally, uh, that little talk cost me an extra 50. <laughs> I got no complaints, Mr. Russell. You do fine. Fifty dollars, you say. That's right. Mm-hmm. Hey, that's quite a wad you're carrying, Giuliano. Must be at least fifteen to twenty grand there. So? So you want to be careful. I am. How much do I owe you altogether? Hundred and fifty bucks. You'd like to double it? I'd like nothing better. It's easy. I need some information from this Mr. Stratton. You got it for me. How? Oh, oh now. Come on, Russell. You you must have some idea. All you've got to do is work on him a little bit. Work on him? Yeah. You look like a boy who knows how to use his fists. Get out. <laughs> you make a big mistake. Go on, Giuliano. Beat it. Okay. No harm to done. Just suppose we forget this little talk, huh? Now think about it. You do that, Russell. You find it a lot healthier than talking. I'll be seeing you, fella. <laughs> Hello? Hello, is this Larry Stratton? Oh, no, you've, uh, you've got the wrong number. Now, look, Stratton, I haven't got time to horse around. I assure you, I'm risking a lot more than you are. Who is this? My name's Russell, Danny Russell. I'm a private detective. Up till a half hour ago, I was working for a man named Cesar Giuliano. Giuliano? That's right. He's probably on his way over to see you. I don't believe you. Now, look, don't be a sap. I told him where you were. He even offered me an extra 150 to take care of you. Now, the smart thing for you to do is to beat him. What kind of a fool do you take me for? Don't you think I know a trap when I see one? You gotta believe me, Stratton. Why should I? How do I know you're not working with Giuliano? I can tell you, Larry. Giuliano. Hello, Stratton. Hang up. Hello, Stratton. That's fine, Larry. Shut the door, Coslo. Huh? Oh, sure. Now, listen, Giuliano. Good. You're going to tell me what I want to hear? You're wasting your time. Come here, Coslo. You you want me, Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Coslo, this is Mr. Stratton. Hi. Mr. Coslo is a wrestler fellow, Larry. I meet him today in gymnasium. They say he can break your neck just like that. Yeah. Just like that. But I think he's how you call a little punchy. Too many beatings in the head. You understand? Uh, what do you want I, I, me to do, Mr. Giuliano? Get him out of here. Oh, you think I bring him here to be lesson for you? <laughs> Strictly between us, Larry, I wouldn't be surprised if you were right. Larry? Larry, where are I... you? Hey, what's the matter, lady? Look. Holy smoke. Oh, Larry, Larry. Oh, he's still breathing. We'd better get a doctor. Where can I find one? Well, if you go down to the corner, you'll see... Oh, no, never mind. I'll get him myself. Oh, please. Sure. I'll be back as fast as I can. Oh. Oh, Larry, darling, what happened? Never mind, Eve. We're getting a doctor. I don't want one. What? I said I don't want one. But Larry... Shut shut the door. All right. Now, now lock it. Now listen to me, Eve. Candid way. No, no, in in that that medicine chest over the basin, there's a a roll of adhesive tape. Will you get it for me? Yes. Is this what you want? No, there should be a roll of half-inch tape. There's none here. Are you sure? Oh, no, I've got it. Well, bring it here. Take off the cover. All right, now open up the roll. What? 
Well, there are numbers written on this. And I didn't tell him. You didn't tell him what? I was afraid they'd beat it out of me, but they didn't. Darling, what is this all about? Honey, don't ask me any questions. Huh? Someone tried to kill you. You don't have to worry. Giuliano wouldn't dare while he hasn't got this. Giuliano? Caesar Giuliano. Who is he, Larry? What does he want no, of please, you? Please, please, don't ask me. Don't ask me. I, I shouldn't have even told you that. I'm in trouble, Eve. I'm in real trouble. Why didn't you go to the police? I can't. But why not? I can't tell you. Well, then, hire a private detective. What good would that do? Oh, darling, obviously you need protection. I can take care of myself. Larry, you've got to. Now, he wouldn't have to be told anything. I I could make up some sort of story. Well, there's a man named Mike Waring. I've heard about him. That the one they call the Falcon? Yes. He's supposed to be very competent. You're not being fair to him, Eve. If this Waring doesn't know what he's up against, he's liable to get himself killed. But darling, believe me, it's the only way. I'm sure nothing will happen to Mr. Waring. And if he does, well... Well, he's... Paid to take the risk. Just a second. Mr. Waring? That's right. I'm Eve Lowry. I spoke to you a little while ago on the telephone. Oh, so you did. Come on in. Thank you. Sit down. Oh, really, I haven't much time. Will it take any less if you stand? Well, I... I guess you're right. Now, what can I do for you? I'm in trouble, Mr. Waring. What do you call trouble? Someone's trying to kill me. Well, that's a good enough definition. He's made several attempts on my life already. Who's he? A man named Caesar Giuliano. Why? Why? Well, I assume that making attempts on your life is more than a hobby with Mr. Giuliano. Does he have a reason? Well, you see, my... My father and Mr. Giuliano were partners. In what business? Importing. Mm -hmm. Go on. Well, Giuliano thought my father swindled him. Did he? Oh, of course not. Mm -hmm. Well, Giuliano swore to get even, but Dad died before he could. So Giuliano transferred his uh, affections to you. Hmm? Yes. Well, what would you like me to do about it? Well, what would you suggest? Oh, there are several possibilities. We could make out a complaint to the DA's office. Oh, no, I, I don't want to do that. I don't want any publicity. I see. Uh, do you know where this Giuliano is staying? Well, I think it's at the Carlton Hotel. Why? I suppose I go up there and have a talk with him. Oh, no. Please don't do that. You don't seem to like any of my ideas. What's wrong with this one? Well, I don't see where it'll accomplish anything. Giuliano will probably deny knowing me. Look, Miss Lowry, if we're both going to worry about this, you're throwing your money away. I suppose you'll leave Mr. Giuliano to me and let me earn my fee, hmm? This is Ed Hurley here again, friends. I have a little suggestion for you ladies who wonder what you're going to do for some interesting menu ideas. And my suggestion is this. Just get a two-pound loaf of Kraft Smooth Melting Pasteurized Processed Cheese Food, Velveeta. You can melt Velveeta for smooth, delicious cheese sauce that'll add extra goodness to vegetables or seafood or rice or just plain toast for a fine main dish. And it's such an easy sauce to make. All you do is melt a half pound of Velveeta in the top of your double boiler. Notice how smooth it melts, without any lumps at all. Then slowly stir in a quarter of a cup of milk, season to your taste, and there you have it. A delicious cheese sauce with a wonderful, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. A flavor that everyone, the youngsters and grandma included, will enjoy often. And it's a wholesome dish. Because Velveeta is so rich in important food values from milk. So whether you melt Velveeta for a swell cheese sauce or slice it thick for hearty sandwiches, you'll find Velveeta is a mighty handy helper, Mother. Get a two-pound loaf tomorrow, won't you? It's America's favorite cheese food. The one and only Velveeta. Made by Kraft. <laughs> Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. An hour has passed since Mike Waring went to work for Eve Lowry, who claimed her life was being threatened by a man named Caesar Giuliano. That's all Mike needed. Being a man of action, he goes right to the seat of the trouble. 
Who is it? Room service. I didn't order anything. Your name Juliano? Yes. That's what the order blank says. Just a second. Hello. You are no waiter? Nope. <laughs> the oldest prick in the world. Apparently it still works. What's your name, mister? Mike Waring. You're not the private detective fella I hear about. Why not? Why you play games? I want you to stop annoying my client. Your client? Mm-hmm. What did he tell you? He? Well, sure, you... Just who are you working for, Waring? Eve Lowry. Eve Lowry? I suppose you'll deny knowing her. I am, suppose I do. Well, it won't wash, Juliano. What have you got against the girl? Well, it's a long story, Waring. I'd like to show you something. Get away from that desk, Juliano. But I just want to show you this. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Oh, come, Waring. A big boy like you, he's not scared of a little gun like this. No, but I've got a lot of respect for it. I don't blame you. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to hear more about your client. Client? This Eve Lowry you mentioned. Never heard of her. Oh, you're going to play it like that, eh? What else can I do? Let go, you fool. Let go. Come on, Juliano, drop it. I... Oh. You stupid fool. How many times must I tell you, let go? <laughs> Yeah? I'm uh, looking for a private dick named Danny Russell. What can I do for you? Hey, you're hurt. Sit down. Okay, thanks. Call your doctor. No, don't bother. Just saw one. Hey, you're, you wouldn't have a drink in this place, would you? Yeah, right in this desk. I'll get you a glass. No, no. Never mind. Hey, hey, hey. Go easy, mister. That stuff's been aged in the woods. <laughs> you mean that desk drawer? Feel any better? Yeah. What happened to your hand? I got it caught in a cash register. Who are you kidding? Never mind. You come pretty highly recommended, Russell. Yeah, by whom? A man named Caesar Giuliano. Did you do some work for him? Get out. What's the matter? Get out of here. You're a friend of Giuliano's. Now, I... Take it easy. I never said I was. Well, I thought. He shot me up and then beat us. When I came to, I went through some of his papers and found your name. What did he hire you for? Let's see your buzzer, Mister. I'm not a cop. My name is Mike Waring. Waring. The Falcon, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, this is a pleasure. You know, you're almost a legend in town. Yeah, me and the Giants. What can I do for you? Well, I'd like a little information. What kind of a job did you do for Giuliano? Routine skip tracing. Wanted me to locate a guy named Larry Stratton. Larry Stratton, huh? Why? Well, first he told me Stratton skipped out of Mexico, owing him some dough on a business deal. Then he offered me 150 bucks to beat some information out of him. Is this on the level? I don't joke about things as sacred as money. He had a roll on him that could choke a horse. Did uh, Giuliano mention a girl named Eve Lowry? No. How's she fit in? I wish I knew. Look, Russell, I've got a proposition. How about the two of us joining forces? I'll see you don't suffer by it. You just got yourself a boy, Waring. What do you want me to do? Know where I can locate Giuliano? You tried the Carlton Hotel? <laughs> where do you think I picked up this slug? Wait a minute, I got an idea. When Giuliano first approached me, I met him at a furnished room in Brooklyn. Well, what do you say we drive out to Brooklyn? Maybe worth the trip. I think this is the place, Mike. Doesn't speak well for Brooklyn. Got a rod on you? Uh -uh. Don't believe in him. I do. I guess nobody's home. Is that a gimmick? You're not thinking of forcing the lock, are you? No, I leave that to you. And I'll look, Mike. Now, don't worry. If you get into trouble, I'll go halfies with you. Okay. How are you coming? There, got it now. Hmm. Don't look like anybody's home. No. Well, as long as we're here, we might... Mike. Huh? Is that what I think it is? I'm afraid so. Huh. Someone really poured a lot of lead into this boy. You recognize him? Sure. It's Giuliano. What are you doing? Going through his pockets. Find anything? No. Nothing but this scrap of paper. 
Mary Stratton, for Hey, that's the character Giuliano hired me to find. Well, now it looks as though he found Giuliano. You ask me... No, you're not imagining things. I heard it, too. It's in tight. Coming from that closet. Yeah. All right, come on out. Stay away from me. Well, if it isn't Miss Lowry. You know her? Sure, this is my client, Eve Lowry. Where'd you get that gun, Angel? Never mind. The important thing is that I know how to use it. If you try to stop me, I... You what? All right, Russell, get it. Got it. You hit me. What did you expect me to do? Applaud while you gave a demonstration on the use of firearms? What are you doing here? Come on, Eve, in case you hadn't noticed, there's a dead body in this room. All right, open up there. Come on, open up. Mike. Who is it? Police. Uh-oh. You can open up or do I have to break down this door? Just a minute. Listen, Russell, I want you to take Eve out of here. Why? You heard me through the fire escape. What about you? I'll stall them. Now, you drive back to Manhattan, see what you can learn about this Larry Stratton. No. Keep quiet. I know what you're getting into, Mike. I'll take my chances. Worst comes to worst, you can bring Eve down to local headquarters and we can straighten it all out. Okay. Come on, honey. No. Well, make up your mind, Angel. Do you go with him or do you stay here and face a murder act? Hey, what's going on in there? Open up. I'll go with him. Well, hurry it up. Lots of luck, Mike. Same to you. Well, what's going on here, wise guy? Why don't you open that door? I was busy. Yeah, who's that? A man named Cesar Giuliano. Huh? Who are you? Mike Waring. Did you gun him? What do you think? I think yes. Come on, Waring, I want you to try out our local jail. I think you'll love it. Hey, let me out. Let me out. You can't hold me here. Yeah, but we are, aren't we? Well, there must be an answer to that. Well, when you think of it, let me know. Now, just a minute. I didn't kill Giuliano. And who did? I tell you, I don't know. And we're right back where we started. Not quite. Giuliano died around 6 o'clock, didn't he? How'd you know that? I heard the coroner talking. Well, I didn't get to that room till after 9. Suppose I told you a witness just turned up who says differently. Then you'd be lying. Okay. Hey, Bruce. What is it, Mike? Throw the party in, will you? Eve. You recognize him, Miss Lowry? Yes. He's a private detective named Mike Waring. I hired him this afternoon to handle a matter for me with Cesar Giuliano. I never dreamt he'd go as far as he did. What are you talking about? Murder, Mr. Waring. You killed Giuliano. I what? Now, don't try to deny it. I saw you do it. And let's see you get around that. <laughs> Remember, tomorrow at your grocer's, you can get a wonderful new salad oil for your homemade salad dressings, your cooking, your baking. It's Kraft Salad Oil, the first salad oil for home use ever offered by the makers of all those wonderful Kraft dressings. Kraft Salad Oil is a lighter-bodied oil, super fine to blend perfectly with other ingredients. Get a pint or quart bottle tomorrow at your grocer's. Ask for Kraft Salad Oil. And now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. A couple of hours have passed since Eve Lowry identified Mike Waring as the man who killed Cesar Giuliano. Now, once again, the cell door opens. Okay, Waring. What do you want now? Uh, that's no way to talk to a guy who's going to give you your freedom. What? Yeah. You can go whenever you like. Is this your idea of a rib? No, no, no. On the level. No, I don't get it. Hello, Mike. Russell. Sorry, I'm late. What happened? Your client made a sucker out of me. When I got her into the car, she heisted my gun. I never figured on her doubling back here. Did you let her go, officer? Yeah, we had nothing on her. We figured you to be the killer. Well, what convinced you otherwise? <laughs> your friend Russell here. Why don't you tell me that at 6 o'clock when Giuliano was shot, you and him were having a couple of beers at a joint. Russell and I... You remember, Mike. It was right before we went over to see Harriet and Nora. Oh, Harriet and Nora. Yeah, I... You didn't involve them. I couldn't help myself. No, I guess not. But the girls aren't going to like this. Uh, no hard feelings, Wary. Uh, no. None at all, officer. Let's go, Russell. So long, Mike. So long. Well, that was quick thinking, Jim. Forget it. It was nothing. That's no way to talk about my neck. 
If you'll pardon the pun, I'm awfully attached to it. What do you intend to do now, Mike? Go back to Manhattan and find Eve Lowry. Any idea where? Yeah. There are two parties involved in this mess. Eve Lowry and Larry Stratton. Now, wouldn't it be strange if they were connected? What makes you think so? Just a hunch. And when I'm in a spot like this, I play him. Because, brother, I've got no other choice. Where's your grip, Larry? Down to the bed, Eve. Want me to pack all your suits? Well, I don't think you'll have room. I'll wear the chalk stripe. You can... <gasps> Larry. Take it easy, honey. Who is it? Who is it? Just us. Mr. Waring. Uh-huh. Well, that hunch was right, Mike. What hunch? I had an idea you two went together like ham and eggs. Listen, Waring, I don't know what you want. But if you think Eve killed Juliana, you're out of your mind. She didn't even know the man. Now why did she come to me with that cock and bull story? She was trying to protect me. Against what? Look, I'm, I'm head cashier in a Washington bank. And Giuliano's been after me to turn over to him the dates of large currency movements. What was it, blackmail? No. Now, don't give me that. Otherwise, you would have gone to the police. What do they have on you? Don't tell him, Larry. What can I lose now, Eve? Giuliano found out that ten years ago I served a term for manslaughter. I was drunk one night and I killed a man with my car. I served two years under another name. And if the bank ever learned about you being an ex-con, you'd be minus a career, huh? That's right. Is that why she killed Juliana? I tell you she didn't. Then who did? I did. Well, you mustn't believe him, Mr. Waring. He's trying to protect me. I killed Juliana. She's lying. It's no use, Larry. They're bound to find out sooner but or later. But you couldn't have done it because I did. What do you think, Russell? Mm. Since one of them's lying. Ah, but which one? She is. I don't believe you. Oh, wait, you wait, 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 wait. To... Just a minute. As far as Juliana was concerned, there's no great loss. He was a crook. But there's no reason why this has to go any further than this room. What do you mean? Well, Russell and I are fond of eating regularly. So, for five grand, we walk out of here, forget we ever knew you. That okay with you, Denny? I don't like it. Oh, come on, give him a break. And two and a half grand apiece isn't to be sneezed at. Well, there's only one trouble with that, Waring. Trouble? I haven't got 5,000. Oh. How about you, Eve? I gave you my last $50. Well, how much can you dig up? Not more than a couple of hundred. Oh, well, that puts a different complexion on things. What do you think, Russell? I say we turn him over to the cops. Yeah, well, that's to be expected. Every killer likes a fall guy handy. What are you getting at? Just what it sounded like, Russell. Didn't anyone ever tell you you can't get away with murder? Really, Mr. Waring, I don't know how to thank you enough. Or maybe you let me give the little bride away. You're not angry at me for involving you? Nah. No. After all, Eve, you're a woman in love, and they're not very rational creatures. Well, tell me, Mr. Waring, how did you figure out it was Danny Russell who killed Juliano? Oh, there were several things, Larry. First of all, Russell told me that Juliano had a roll on him big enough to choke a horse. And when I went through Juliano's pockets, all I found was a scrap of paper with your name on it. So, what happened to the money? Well, obviously, it was stolen. That's right. So that opened up a new field. Suppose this was a plain, everyday murder for money. But Larry or I might have taken it. No, not very likely, Angel. That's why I offered to accept the bribe. I figured that if you two were willing to risk the chair for each other, a little thing like $5,000 wouldn't stop you. If you had it. And when you heard the best we could scare up was a couple of hundred. Uh -huh, then I knew I had to look elsewhere. Uh -huh. well, what made you think of Russell? Well, he got me out of jail by inventing an alibi for me. Something about a double date with a couple of girls named Harriet and Nora. Oh, I don't understand. Well, you see, by giving me an alibi, he also gave himself one at the same time, and he really needed it. Oh. Now, the truth of the matter is that at 6 o'clock when Juliano was shot, I was still out cold in his apartment after he plugged me. No wonder Russell made it so easy for me to escape from him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you know what gets me, Angel, is what you were doing in the closet where we found you. Oh. Well, I drove out to see Juliano, hoping that if I pleaded with him, he wouldn't bother Larry anymore. When I got there, he was dead. Then when I heard you outside, I, I got panicky. Mm -hmm. And down at headquarters when you accused me of the murder? Well, that was for the same reason. I wanted to protect Larry. <laughs> sure, I should have known. Well, good night, Larry. Take care of yourself, Angel. Now, wait, wait a minute, Mr. Waring. Why rush off? Well, this is all okay for you lovebirds, but I've got a lot of work to do. At this time of night? Mm-hmm. I've got a date with one of the most luscious redheads in New York. You call that work? And you've got to explain why you're 24 hours late, brother. It's nothing else but. <laughs> Good night, folks. There 
comes a time in the life of every homemaker when she has to fix a dinner fast, and that's when Kraft Dinner is such a help. You see, in just seven minutes cooking time, Kraft Dinner makes delicious macaroni and cheese. Wonderful, tender macaroni with fine cheese flavor all through. Just like I said, in only seven minutes cooking time. That's because every package of Kraft Dinner gives you a special quick cooking macaroni and just the right amount of Kraft grated for that grand cheese flavor. So tomorrow, get a couple of packages of Kraft Dinner. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Welcome back. A nice bluff by the Falcon trying to get the couple to bribe him. I'll be honest that I'd been a bit suspicious of the other private eye played by Mandel Kramer for a while and did note that by giving the Falcon an alibi, he was giving himself one. It's also worth noting that unlike Mr. Chameleon or Mr. Keen or Nick Carter, the Falcon is well known in some circles and not in others. The police officer who arrested him couldn't care less who he was. Thus, the price of only being semi-prominent. Well, now, let's talk about our listener support slash appreciation campaign. It's been almost a year since I first started podcasting full-time and left my day job. And things are going all right. It's been a learning curve, but I think we have made some progress. It's definitely a different situation when the podcast is your full-time source of income. And we're continuing to figure out new things to try and do to help build the podcast. But throughout all that, our Patreon supporters have really been such a vital part of our success, both before and after the decision to my decision to go full time at this we have been doing patreon now for nearly nine years i just realized recently that in may of 2025 we're going to start celebrating the 10th anniversary of some folks being patreon supporters that's amazing but so is everyone who signed up we're up to close to 300 Patreon supporters with so many joining and coming on board to support us in the past year. Thank you so much. Uh, Patreon works uh, so well for listeners, for listener support, because you can set up a small recurring uh, amount to support the podcast. There's no worrying about writing a big check or making a big credit card payment. It just comes out in small, affordable donations each month. But it really does add up, particularly when you have close to 300 people doing it. All my Patreon supporters get our monthly update, and they get to find out what some of the things are that we're planning for all the podcast projects we do. You know, we not only have Great Detectives, we've got Amazing World of Radio and the Old Time Radio Snack Wagon, along with uh, Public Domain Video Theater, as well as a personal update. Patreon supporters will also get to decide what our upcoming summer series will be for the Amazing World of Radio, and they always make such interesting choices. Last year, we got got to hear a lot of Cary Grant in the radio sitcom The Blanding. In past years, we've had summer programs honoring such stars as Humphrey Bogart and Angela Lansbury. And who knows what Patreon supporters will choose for our summer 2024 series. But to be eligible, you need to be a Patreon supporter to sign up before the end of March, and the voting will occur 
uh, in early April. Also, if you support the show at the Shamus level of $4 or more or higher, you get access to our premium site. And that includes all of the programs of Great Detectives and Amazing World of Radio with no dynamic ads inserted. Plus, you also get access to our extras, which are three additional old-time radio programs featuring Great Detectives actors in other roles. This month, we featured programs featuring Barton Yarborough, Carl Swenson, and Brian Donlevy. And of course, I include my commentary on those. And then there are just other random opportunities that we come up with. Uh, For example, there was a Patreon supporter who emailed me and suggested that the Opening line to the old time radio snack wagon where someone says, are you Adam Graham, might be delivered by uh, Patreon supporters. And so we had several submit their recordings and you will hear them among the other voices that we have doing intros in our second season of the old time radio snack wagon. For me, it's provided quite a bit of financial stability while I appreciate uh, podcast advertising. There's a whole lot of variability both to dynamic ads and then also to the ads that I record on the podcast. I had 11 episodes that were sponsored in 2021. I had zero episodes that were sponsored in 2022. And I had about a dozen episodes that were sponsored in 2023. And with the dynamic ads, our payment and the number of ads that get played vary from month to month and day to day based on things we don't really have any control over. So to have the stability of Patreon support is really such a blessing financially. But even more than that is the uh, community aspect because with our Patreon supporters, we have a group of folks who love the program and are supportive. And so I can take questions to them like I did when I was getting the old time radio snack wagon uh, set up last year. Uh, Got some really helpful feedback from our Patreon supporters that made that podcast better. Just all of the support and encouragement that was provided there Uh, throughout the year was just so helpful and such a great blessing. Now this year we're going to do something uh, additional and this is absolutely free so even if you can't support the show financially uh, and you live in the United States and Canada this is something that can really help us out. And I'll emphasize the U.S. and Canada part. I love all of our listeners. Uh, It's great to hear from people who are listening around the world, and it always amazes me that folks listen to the podcast in places like Osaka in Japan or St. Leonard's on Sea in the United Kingdom. For purposes of this survey, we just uh, need U.S. and Canadian listeners, and you can go to that uh, at adsurvey.greatdetectives.net. The point of this survey is to help improve our advertising. Now, typically, our advertising has been very transactional. That is, a company will approach me about advertising on the podcast. They want to get their product or their podcast name out. I take a look, and there are some things I've said no to. If I look into it and it appears to be a good company and a good product or service, I will do the advertising. Ad will run a campaign for a few weeks or a few months, and then we're done. Well, I'm not close to doing that sort of thing in the future, and I think it can be really good. Uh, I particularly enjoyed when we were able to promote Green Archer Comics in their Johnny Dollar series a few months back. I'd really like much more of our advertising to be relational. That is, we have a company that fits with... Uh, our listeners, and it's going to be with us for a while, and it'll be a long-term relationship between us and the sponsor. I'm looking for the type of long-term sponsors who could be our Anchor Hawking or Wild Root Cream Oil or Kraft. If we can do that, it'll mean more stability in income and in messaging, as well as in the flow of the show. 
For you as a listener, it'll mean a better experience with less random ads and more ads that actually appeal to you or are interesting. Now, other podcasts have these sort of relationships, but the big challenge we face is that we're a little bit different in terms of an audience. If you're a tech podcast or a business podcast, there's companies that really want to market to your niche. Because of our focus on old-time radio detectives, it's kind of hard to discern what the sort of ideal sponsor for us is. So I created the survey with just a few questions. Now, none of them are demographic questions. We've got enough demographic uh, questions from our main listener survey, which I appreciate everyone who's filled that out over the years, but we're not looking for that or any personal identifying information. We're not trying to get email list or anything like that. We do want to know, make sure that you are in the U.S. or in Canada. And we want to know when you generally listen to the podcast. Are you listening more when you're driving or when you're about to go to bed? Uh, then also the industry you work for or if you're a homemaker or retired. And then we'll also want to know if there are specific types of companies that you'd like to hear ads for. In all of these, we've got several categories to select. We also have an other option. Now, there's only one point that might cause some confusion because we do have as an option for when you listen and we have an option for when you're working or when you're driving. I'd ask that if you drive for a living, just select driving rather than working. We also do have a question to verify if you're human, but I just ask uh, if you're a human and for you to top that, I don't think an ability to identify which pictures have motorcycles in them really has much to do about proving your humanity, so we don't go that route. Again, if you go to adsurvey.greatdetectives.net, it would really help me out and I'd appreciate it because it'll be tremendously helpful. Well, now let's go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Delilah, Patreon supporter since December 2019, currently supporting the podcast at the shameless level of $4 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support, Delilah. And that will do it for today. If you're enjoying the podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. And be sure to rate and review the podcast wherever you download it from. We'll be back next Monday with another episode of The Adventures of the Falcon. But join us back here tomorrow for the start of another Yours Truly Johnny Dollar serial where... They call us flat-footed, Dollar. That's how they happen to get away with it. How do you mean, Lieutenant? We flashed the red light on them and they slowed down and rolled up to us like they were going to stop. The car was a different make from the one they'd supposedly been seen in. We found later they'd stolen another one in Phoenix. I see. Then when we threw the spot on them, we saw just the one man, the driver. Turned out the others were down on the floor. How many were in the car? Four, apparently. Three afterward. I shot one of them. They threw his body out a half mile down the road. I may have hit another one. I'm not sure. That figures. Our tip-off from Kansas City named Jipper, Nitson, Ronnie Bledsoe, and two unidentified. Yeah, and Bledsoe's the one who was killed. Nitson and the other two got through. You said they slowed down as though they were going to stop. What happened? Oh, there's no excuse, Mr. Dollar. We were careless, that's all. But you get so many false alarms, mistaken IDs. And to make a car, the whole setup, it didn't seem to fit. You can't be wound up ready to pitch all the time. Well, we paid for it. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.